Good morning to my friends and family and welcome to this episode of Jim's 5am Club. What I'm going to do today is something a little bit different from what I normally do. Instead of uh, taking and presenting this vlog from uh, Sydney Harbour, Circular Quay, the one of the beautiful sort of locations around Sydney. What I'm going to do today is just going to kick off this video here at Mascot uh, and do a walk and talk from Mas Mascot Station to my work area. So today's version of Jim's 5am Club is going to once again be a continuation of my sub-series, all that I've learned from Anthony Robbins over the years. And I'm putting together a 365 vlog series, a tribute to the big man Anthony Robbins, based on all of the learnings, all of the material that I've been able to come into contact with over the past 30 years. Uh, from back in the days in 1994 and 1995 where I went to two UPWs and I also read his two groundbreaking books Unlimited Power and Awaken the Giant Within and listened to his tape series Power Talk and to a number of other tapes where, we, where he had uh, leaders in their field being interviewed where he taps into their magic he taps into the things that they do to set them apart and make them the very very best in the world at their particular uh, skill set so I was just going through my UPW notes here and I'll just show you the notes and the thing that caught my eye today is the word energy transference. How important energy is, how it's the life source of all we do and who we are. And we'll just talk about energy transference for the next little bit and uh, see where it leads us. Anthony Robbins is very, very big on energy and anybody who's been to one of his seminars will attest to the fact that A, the seminar is very, very high energy, probably one of the most high energy sort of uh, experiences that I've been to, and just the, the sense of uh, communal euphoria is also very, very um, remarkable as well where everybody is just powered up everybody is just g'd up and uh, are expressing high energy levels um, at the drop of a pin or you know on command Anthony Robbins also mentioned many many years ago he mentioned it at this UPW as well that age is just a number what is more important to understand is that age is an energy level and the older we get, typically, we tend to lose our energy levels. But it doesn't mean that you can be like my age, 63 or 70 or 80, and not have a high energy level. You just need to be able to understand the mechanics just need to understand how it all works out and fits together so you can tap into it and make the most of it. I remember years ago Anthony Robbins interviewed a martial artist um, and they talked about energy and when you talk to sports people like Siri Lindy and other athletes you quickly learn that being able to use and tap into energy is a very, very important skill 
for somebody who wants to be a leader and to dominate their area of sport. And I remember distinctly in that tape where the fellow says that many people think that energy is a limited resource and their thought process is to try and conserve energy and to use it when you need it most. But uh, that person that Anthony Robbins, and I forget his name, I forget who it was, but I, I do remember the message, which is more important. I remember hearing him say that energy can be called upon and created on demand. And the more energy you use, the more energy you have. So just changing the way you think about energy will dramatically change how you're able to perform not only as an athlete but also as an individual so once again the key message from the big man is that now we need to be able to use we need to be able to leverage our energy sources as best we can and to know that energy is the basis of life and uh, we can call on energy uh, on command and we can teach our bodies to create more energy by just moving. So getting back to this concept of energy transference, what we're saying here is that energy can transfer and all people and you can attest to this as well if you sit and think about it all people are infectious in many ways and one of the great greatest infections is energy how many times have we been with people where we feel energized or how many times have we been in other environments where we feel absolutely drained. This is the concept of energy transference. So uh, Anthony Robbins goes a little bit deeper into this concept where he talks about the fact that our body language, our, our body language has a significant impact on how we feel and how we can use and uh, transfer that energy to others. I guess the key message for all of us is that we need to manage our energy, we need to manage our uh, body language, we need to manage our physiology so that we're adding value and that we're a positive contributor to those around us rather than to be a drainer, rather than to be the, one of those people who just taps into and drains other people's energy. So at this seminar at the UPW, one of the key takeaways, I guess, for all of us was that energy comes from movement. Energy comes from the way we talk to each other the way we talk to ourselves, the words we choose, but also how we move our body. And Anthony Robbins went around the room and just asked people, you know, how do you go about managing your energy? And some people talked about eating, other people talked about other things, and Anthony, Rob Anthony Robbins said that now, eating actually depletes your energy because when you eat and when you have lots to eat your body uses up a lot of energy in digestion so something which is uh, something to think about the thought that eating depletes your energy because your body uses a lot of energy in uh, in uh, digestion 
is something to think about. But the key message that came from the big man is that energy comes from movement and your body language, your physiology. So much so that he got people to stand up and to do an exercise. And the bottom line from that um, experiment, that group experiment that he did, was that everybody was able to discover that they felt differently, they felt more powerful. And all it was, was a two millimeter change in their chest, in how they held their body. So we need to be detectives of physiology and to check in on ourselves from time to time and to check in with our families from time to time to make sure that we're making the best use of our physiology, of our body language, because not only does it help us feel better, feel stronger, feel calmer, depending on what state you want to feel it, you want to be in, it also influences dramatically the people around us. It influences our partner, our children, our parents, whatever group you're in. So uh, I guess the key message, the key recurring message is that we need to manage our state. And in order to manage our state, we need to take control of our thoughts and more importantly, to take control of our physiology. Because when it comes to communication, scientists who study these things have been able to make an observation that 7% of the message is the words that you use. So a small amount of connection and communication comes from the words that you choose. 38% uh, comes from how you use those words, your tonality, the speed, the timbre of your voice, and how you, how you leverage those words. But the greatest impact on communication, the greatest impact on connection and influence comes from how you use your body, your energy, the way you're able to transfer your energy to your words and that shapes and gives meaning and color to those words and communication as well. So really interesting and a really powerful lesson as you can hear. There's noise all around us. There's energy all around us. You know, you can have cars that are silent you can have cars that are loud uh, and you can have a sense of the energy being transferred from those vehicles. Um, and the torque that is created. So once again, I'm heading close to work now, so it hasn't taken me as long as what I thought it would take. We're into about 14 minutes but uh, it's important once again to remember just like this runner here is running what he's actually doing is he's using energy but he's also creating energy because energy is created in our muscles I think it's called ATP I forget the exact scientific name for it but what we have is the chemical reaction from uh, using up energy has a byproduct and that byproduct is stored energy that we can uh, tap into and use so get off the couch stand up move your body as that song says, because the more movement you engage in, 
the more movement you engage in, the more energy sources you're going to have and you're going to be able to tap into. Um, and you don't need to age. Or if you're aging, you can at least age gracefully. Um, over the years, I have done various physical activities. I've been a runner, or I've run a half marathon. I've been a swimmer where I've swum five kilometers. I've been a dance fitness instructor where I can go for an hour or two non-stop. And I've worked in a physical sort of work environment for the past six years. And sometimes you just don't feel like it. Sometimes you just feel tired. Sometimes you just feel listless. But what happens over time is that once you start moving, once you start sweating, once your heartbeat starts to pump, then it's amazing how good you feel and how quickly you're able to transfer that energy into action. And when you're in a class who is dancing or when you're in a function where people are dancing, the mood just changes to elation so quickly because not only are you moving, but others are moving around you. And I've been able to observe different people over the years. Um, one, of my, one of my mates, Harry, is really good at this. Whenever the music starts and he's at a function, he will immediately get all the women, go to the table, grab them by the hand, and just get them up onto the dance floor and it's amazing how quickly that action turns into mayhem, where everybody gets into the uh, act, everybody gets into the move, everybody gets into the, the mood, and uh, we have a great party and a great night. But it's all about getting those first people up, getting those people dancing, that makes all the difference. Anyway, I've got my mate, my mate Shane here. We're just looking over the bridge. Uh, this bridge, or this Cooks River here. Sometimes we have huge numbers of uh, mullet swimming around here. But uh, it changes from time to time. But uh, once again, they get on the move and they, they, they live and they operate in schools. And for those who have seen schools of fish what you'll what you'll notice is that they all move or well, they all have an energy which reflects the energy of the group they'll swim at a particular pace but once they have a predator come in then all of a sudden that pace will change um, will become more anxious um, and they start to use energy to help them with their survival. But we humans too need to use our energy productively for our survival. Because the more you move, um, the more you can do in your life. The more you move, uh, the more you can influence others to move as well. For those who go and watch sport, what you'll often see and what you'll often realize is there are some people, there are some players who are able to influence and lift their team. But there are also some players who are hot and cold, like Latrell Mitchell, and some players that you know, we've known over the years. Um, Jared Hayne is another one that comes to mind that can be hot or cold. And when they're hot, they're really hot and when they're hot their team is really hot as well because they're able to lift the team through their energy transference but when they're cold it's amazing how it, how infectious their physiology is because it impacts the rest of the team 
and it turns the other players off. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Jim's 5am Club. Just looking down there in the river, I can see some ducks just swimming about. Can't see many fish, but I'm sure Shane can see some fish up there. I just couldn't believe my eyes the other day. I looked over the bridge here and there were just thousands and thousands of mullet, but just not any mullet. They were massive mullet. You know, the length of my forearm and probably much thicker than my forearm as well, swimming up and down. So I'd imagine they've come in here to spawn potentially. Um, I don't know what they were doing here, but uh, there were lots and lots of them and they were massive. How still is this water and how beautiful is that reflection off the water? Got that little smokestack there, <laughs> creating some pollution. Uh, we've got the sunrise happening over here in the east and it's going to be another wonderful, wonderful day. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Jim's 5am Club where we've examined ever so slightly the concept of energy transference. Um, I'm sure there's a lot more that we could add to it and learn from it but the key message is if you want to live life you need to be active and we need to learn how to uh, bend and stretch we need to learn how to move and to make the most of our energy and to run as fast or as slow as the people around us um, once again you don't want to be the person who's the agitator and creates too much energy all the time but by the same token, you don't want to be the person who's the drainer, who drains people. So we need to pick and choose when we're going to be uh, the uh, energizer, the energizer bunny, um, and make sure that we're contributing to those around us. But to never, never forget that age is a number, but more importantly, your age is your energy level so try and stay as young as possible by using your energy wisely and being uh, infectious in the best possible way. Anyway, take care everybody, wishing you all the best and we'll chat again. It's Jim here signing off from Jim's 5am club on this morning and uh, have a happy and a productive day. Bye for now.